Hey there, and welcome to another episode of the Blogcast for SeanVanDyke.com. I'm Sean Van Dyke, and I'm a construction industry consultant, business coach, and mentor. Now, I wouldn't exactly say that I'm your host because this isn't a podcast. There are no guests, no high-dollar production, and no agenda. I just want to make it easy for you to get the information that you need to run a better construction business. So every time I publish a blog post, I grab my microphone and I record an audio version of the post so that you can listen to it anytime, anywhere, and use this information to run a better construction business. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about cost plus contracts. And I'll tell you right out of the gate, I'm not a real big fan of cost plus contracts. I think that contractors think that they're an easy and simple way to execute a construction project. But cost plus contracts are not easy and they are certainly not simple. Although I'm not a huge fan of them, they can be an effective way to deliver a construction project. But the effectiveness of a cost plus contract is directly proportional to two things. One, the contractor's ability to manage the flow of information. And number two, the owner must have an understanding of the risks that she is exposing herself to with a cost plus contract. You gotta have those two things. Successfully executing a cost plus contract takes just as much work, if not more, than executing a fixed price contract. And that's what I hope to show you in this blogcast. So with that said, let's dig into the blogcast and you'll see what I mean. In theory, cost plus contracts, also known as time and materials contracts, are a win-win for the contractor and the homeowner. You see, the contractor's risk is lowered because the owner agrees to pay exactly the cost of the project, whatever they are, plus some predetermined rate. And this is that plus part. And that plus part is always exactly what the contractor needs to cover his overhead expenses and to make a profit. Well, the owner is also going to save money because she's going to be able to pay for exactly what her project costs, and she gets to avoid all of the fluff that we all know that contractors put in their projects to cover the unknowns. Sounds great, right? Remember, I said in theory, cost plus contracts are a win-win, but reality is completely different. Now, before we get too far into this broadcast, let me say this note that nothing in my post online or in this broadcast should be considered legal or professional advice. You need to make sure that you seek a qualified legal professional when it comes to reviewing your contracts. In my previous post, I listed 10 provisions that I think should be included in every contract. With cost plus contracts, you can't include several of these provisions and I think that that's a problem. So here's just a few of them that are really difficult to implement in a cost plus contract. The length of contract. A cost plus contract, the scope isn't known, so therefore, how can the schedule be known? Project scope. Most cost plus contracts only have a general scope of work developed, but the specific scope of work has not been developed enough to provide a fixed price. Because if the project were completely developed, the scope of work was completely developed, then why would you need to do a cost plus contract? You could just be able to give a fixed price. Another provision that's left out of a lot of cost plus contracts is the payment schedule. The contractor will have a really difficult time defining the payment schedule for the owner because the scope hasn't been determined. The schedule hasn't been determined. So without these two things, then how can you determine what exactly the payment schedule is other than you're gonna pay every week or every month, but we can't tell you how many weeks or how many months because it's a cost plus. And finally, the biggest problem I see with with cost plus contracts, change orders. I don't really even think they can exist in a cost plus contract. Now, I know that people are going to argue with me and say, yeah, of course, Sean, you can have change orders. But if you think about it, a cost plus contract means the scope isn't defined when we start the work. The schedule's not defined when we start the work, at least not enough to be able to give you a fixed price. So therefore, if the scope isn't determined and the price hasn't been determined, then how can there be such a thing as change orders? we're not changing anything. The project's changing all the time. So it's very hard to determine in a cost plus contract what's actually a change order. And I have kind of joked around with my clients that have suffered through a cost plus contract before. And I say no cost plus contract ever has finished over budget or over schedule. Because in a cost plus contract, 
the contract costs exactly what it ends up costing and the schedule ends up being exactly what the schedule is. It's not predetermined beforehand if those two things were known, the scope and the schedule and all of the information, then you just give a fixed price. So I don't think that you can have change orders in a cost plus contract. So why would you use a cost plus contract? So why would you use a cost plus contract? Well, I think that there are two reasons that contractors will typically use a cost plus contract. One, they don't have the amount of information to quote the project. Or number two, and this is where I find a lot of contractors are suffering under cost plus contracts. And the reason they go to them is they really don't have the ability or the systems or the knowledge in order to estimate projects correctly. So let's say that you, they have enough information, it's all in the drawings, but they convince the, the homeowner to go with a cost plus contract because they're afraid that they're gonna miss something because they don't know how to estimate the project. So they'll go into a cost plus contract and then that's really not a good situation for either contractor or the homeowner. Because I think if you've got the information there, a professional contractor should be able to provide you with a fixed price for a detailed and specific scope of work. Now a cost plus contract might be an attractive option for a homeowner. And I find that there are basically three reasons why a homeowner will want a cost plus contract. Number one, they want a cost plus contract because their plans aren't complete. Number two, their plans aren't complete and they just wanna get started. And number three, the biggest one of all, why a homeowner wants a cost plus contract because they think it's going to save them money. And all three of these reasons are horrible reasons to enter into a construction contract. All of these reasons involve a lack of information. Proceeding with a construction contract without all of the information defined is a recipe for disaster. So what's wrong with cost plus contracts? In the post, I list several reasons for them and I'm gonna read them off right here. There's about 10 of them, so hang tight. Number one, the contractor has little or no incentive to keep costs low. The higher the cost, the more money the contractor makes. And I think this is a con conflict of interest. Number two, although the contract may be cost plus, the owner still requests an estimate for the cost of the project in order to award the project to the contractor. Well, when this estimate is exceeded, and it will be because not all the information is known, then the owner will demand to know why. The most honest answer to their demands is that the contractor was just guessing at the estimate because he's either A, didn't have all the information, or B, didn't know how to develop a fixed price. But remember, this is cost plus. The owner agrees to pay the cost, whatever the cost may be, and the fees associated with the work. And no, reason number three, why cost plus contracts typically don't work, most cost plus contracts stipulate that only project related costs will be paid by the owner. So overhead expenses for the overall business are not allowed. But how is the contractor supposed to run the business of contracting if the owner is not willing to pay for the very expenses that allow the contractor to stay in business? It's crazy, I know, and this is the, these are some of these problems. Well, the answer to that is he has to pad the cost numbers, which usually means his labor, to make up for the difference that's allowed in the plus portion of the contract. And I see that all the time, that cost plus contract for the owner doesn't allow for certain overhead expenses because according to the owner, they don't apply directly to his or her job. And it's crazy. Reason number four, cost plus contracts typically don't work is the plus part of a contract. The, the plus part of a cost plus contract can be extremely difficult to negotiate because the terms of the plus may mean different things to different people. Is it a fixed fee, a percentage of the cost? Is the is the plus percentage of the markup or the margin? What's the industry standard? What is enough markup? What is enough profit? What is enough fixed fee that you should be charging? Reason number five, a cost plus contract shifts the risk from the contractor to the owner. Typically, the owner is not a construction professional and may not understand the risks involved. When these risks surface in the form of line items in the budget being exceeded, then the owner will refer back to that estimated budget. Well, the owner will want to know why the estimate was exceeded. Well, the answer is, it was just an estimate. It was not a quote. The owner agreed to pay the actual cost, not the estimated price. Reason number six, 
the least expensive way to determine the cost or price of a construction project is before the work begins. Construction projects don't get cheaper as time goes on. They only get more expensive. Reason number seven, cost plus contracts don't really work. The contractor must have the administrative systems in place to track every cost for the project and the ability to report these costs in an organized and timely manner in order to receive the payment. But the cost of these administrative systems, the tracking software, accounting systems, administrative personnel, office supplies, etc., well, these aren't considered direct project costs and they cannot be billed to the owner. So if these expenses are not recovered, then the contractor will be losing money. Reason number eight, cost plus contracts don't work or typically don't work. Owners expect your plus to be limited to 10 to 20% markup. And you'll hear this all the time. That's kind of the industry standard. Well, these markups, a 10% or 20% markup yield a 9% or 16.7% margins respectively. Now, few contractors can sustain a profitable business at these margins. If your construction business needs to have a 35% markup on your costs in order to make a sustainable profit and you're only allowed a 20% markup, then you have to shift 15% of your expenses into your cost numbers. If you don't, then you'll be out of business. If you do, then you really aren't charging the owner the actual cost of the project. See, all sorts of costs. Uh, conflicts of interest with a cost plus contract. Reason number nine, I don't think that these things really work, is that mistakes happen on every project. Well, who pays for the mistakes? The owner doesn't want to because it's not the owner's fault, but mistakes and rework are just part of the cost. In a cost plus contract, the owner agrees to pay the cost. Try explaining that to the owner before the work begins and see how she likes it. Explain to them that when mistakes are made, that they're going to have to pay for it. And reason number 10, why I don't think cost plus contracts necessarily work, is there is no industry standard structure for a cost plus contract. This leads to confusion about the terms of the contract and the methods of execution. All right, so we've talked about why you shouldn't use a cost plus contract. Now, what are some of the reasons that you should use a cost plus contract? And I'll read these off here, and there's about eight of them. So a cost plus contract is a difficult way to produce a construction project on time and on budget because the factors that lead to determining the schedule and the budget are not known. Contractors that successfully use cost plus contracts have the following systems and procedures in place prior to executing the contract. And these are the eight reasons and you got to have these in place if you want to successfully execute a cost plus contract. Number one, you must have a field production job costing system that tracks every penny and every hour spent on the project, including all direct and indirect costs. Number two, you must have a project management system that could be a person or a team of people that manage and coordinate the flow of information between the field and the office. Number three, you must have an administrative team that tracks, audits, and prepares all the financial reporting, including invoices, budget updates, payroll, and payables. Number four, and you must have an RFP or request for proposal procedure for the solicitation of bids from subcontractors that is strictly followed and tracked. Number five, you must have an RFI procedure or request for information uh, procedure in place to communicate with the owner and the architect as changes and additional information arise. And it's a cost plus contract. There's always additional information and communication that arise. Number six, you must have a fully executable construction contract with terms and conditions defined. I know that sounds ridiculous, but a lot of folks go into cost plus contracts just saying, well, we'll send you the bills as, as they pile up and they never define the terms and get a written contract for a cost plus contract, or they mask it with just saying it's time and materials. Number seven, you must have a communication system that the contractor follows to keep the owner up to date with production, payment, and schedule updates. And number eight, the contractor must have deep pockets because the contractor is usually financing the job because he'll have to incur the costs before he can bill them. And are these financing costs, are they included in the budget? 
Even if you get a deposit prior to beginning, eventually the cost of the work in place exceeds the income for the project. So the contractor will be financing the job. If the contractor is prepared to do all of these things, and there are many contractors that do have all of these things in place. They have the team, they have the people, they have the systems, they have the contracts, they've got the whole infrastructure in place. Then those contractors have a better chance of having a successful cost plus contract. But listen to this and understand cost plus contracts are not easier than fixed price contracts. They're both difficult, but a fixed price contract is simple. Pay this price for this scope of work. When that scope of work changes, the price changes. That's pretty simple. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't use a cost plus contract. I'm saying that cost plus contracts are not simpler than fixed price contracts. And here are a few examples of different types of cost plus contracts. And I'm going to read this from Wikipedia's website. So you've got cost plus a fixed fee or CPFF. And these contracts pay a predetermined fee that was agreed upon at the time of the contract formation. You've also got CPIF or cost plus incentive fee. The contracts have a larger fee awarded for their contracts which meet or exceed performance targets including any cost savings. You have a CPAF cost plus award fee and these contracts pay a fee based on the contractor's work performance or you have cost plus percentage of cost. You pay a fee that rises as the contractor's cost arises. And that one's pretty hairy to kind of negotiate because it's certainly a conflict of interest there. But here, here are some questions to ask yourself about using a cost plus contract. Which cost plus contract works best for you and your business? Which cost plus contract will your customer want for the project? What is preventing you from determining a fixed price for the project? Is the project scope going to change? What is the client going to do when the costs exceed the estimated budget? And do you have the management and administrative systems in place to track and report every cost for the project? In conclusion, you will have to sell your construction projects. They will not sell themselves. With a fixed price contract, you sell the value of the work before the work begins. With a cost plus contract, you're going to have to justify the cost after the work is done. It is very difficult for contractors to stay in business when they spend more time justifying their costs than selling their value. Need help streamlining your construction business? Sign up today to receive a free copy of the Paperwork Punch List. 28 Days to Streamline Your Construction Business. And this book is available exclusively for free at seanvandyke.com slash the paperwork punch list. That's seanvandyke.com, S-H-A-W-N-V-A-N-D-Y-K-E dot com slash the paperwork punch list. Hey, Sean Van Dyke here. I just wanted to thank you so much for taking time out of your day to listen to this audio post. Email me any questions or comments you might have at my email address, which is connect at seanvandyke.com. That's C-O-N-N-E-C-T at seanvandyke.com. And let me know what you think. Thanks so much.